So what we have been discussing, do you all have access to the meeting notes? It's on the invite, but I'll stick this in the chat as well. And then what we have been discussing in past meetings is um, the cloud, a little bit the Tekton client plugin, but also um, the cloud events plugin proposed by Vibav. Um, and there's more on that in the meeting notes to give you a bit of context if you are not familiar with those initiatives. Hey guys. Hi, Bob. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, is there a little bit noise in my microphone by any chance? I'm using another microphone. Okay. Okay, I guess then it's fine. Okay. Okay, so hey guys, nice to see you. Um uh so let's let's get started. Very good. I will screen share the notes. Yep. We can go over the action items from last week's meeting. So we were gonna do some research on cloud events, metadata, and what that would contain. Um, think about user stories around cloud events. There are a number of action items we have here, actually. And the play with the cloud events SDK. Wouldn't, I'll let you go ahead, you both. Yeah, uh, so, mm, so here, okay, so research needed on what cloud events metadata should contain. So this one, uh, I saw around a bit and saw how if the events already being collected and uh, sent to a place uh, through Jenkins. So it turns out there is a plugin called statistics, uh, statistics handler, or something so let me just I just have it right here. Things the Jenkins oh yeah it's the statistics cat this plugin basically uh, could help us get started with like what all stuff we can uh, send as cloud events. Uh, then uh, what I was thinking with this was we could probably just uh, uh, start with getting these uh, events with the statistics gatherer already gathers and then uh, convert them to cloud events with the plugin. So this is what I was thinking about. And uh, this would be a good start basically for this. Uh, and yeah, so that is that is for that. Let me just open the doc so I can just. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here. Yeah, and then there is, uh, so that, that was that was some of the research I did. Then also uh, the metadata, uh, so I still have to make the metadata table and like what that looks like. Uh, the thing is I have been on uh, vacation for this last week, not vacation as such, but uh, last two days I was working, but before I have been on vacation. Uh, so I'll work on I'll work on a table for that for the metadata what it should contain exactly, and uh, uh, then uh, with respect to the cloud events SDK, uh, so I read the code in the examples for the cloud events SDK, and uh, seems rather straightforward like how we could actually uh, change the Jenkins uh, uh, like job uh, like start stop finish like or whatever the events that are there from the stat statistics gatherer plugin we could actually just uh, convert them to uh, cloud events directly uh, we sh we just have to uh, see how to extend the statistics gatherer plugin for that and we could uh, kind of start out over there so this also kind of falls under what could be the um, uh, extend of the bootstrap so the bootstrap uh, can contain a basic uh, cloud events SGB, uh, like user of cloud events SGB basic module and then the student can go ahead and see how that works and then uh, uh, they can 
uh, play around with the statistics, gather a plugin. We can help them out with uh, how to get these uh, get these statistics and then convert them to cloud events and then what the metadata should look like then. So uh, this this is what I was thinking we could do. And uh, so the pro uh, okay. So uh, what is next? So find endpoints that can be subscribed to. Can I can I ask you on what you were just saying, Vibab? Um, this yeah, is yeah. this is for me, and it might be helpful to others. Um, when you talk about taking the events that we can already sort of register and it, transforming them to cloud events, what what is involved in that process of transformation? Mm, good question. So that would be uh, reading through the statistics rather a plugin code, and uh, the statistics rather plugin has DSL, which uh, people can already use. So it is clue. It has a sync as well that uh, you can give, and this sync uh, like is given in the statistics rather plugin, and all the events regarding job project creation uh, or anything. That have uh, that the user has subscribed to, they just go to that thing. So the trans. So what? So I I don't have a detailed idea about like what goes into uh, the transformation exactly, but this would mean that uh, the user uh, student would have to extend uh, classes from the statistics as a plugin and then um, work them out in the uh, work them out in the uh, cloud cloud events plugin itself. So that would be the high level process. But uh, I uh, what I'll do is I'll try to figure out what is the exact detail process, and uh, I uh, I can update you guys uh, like on the channel or the next meeting. You know. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. That would be awesome as well. Thank you, Vibhav. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so. So the find, so the next one we have is uh, find endpoints that can be subscribed to. So uh, this one I was thinking about it a little bit because this this one is more related to consuming cloud events, and uh, um, I am not sure uh, how that would work exactly because uh, I haven't worked on something like that before. So. Gareth, uh, do you uh, do you have an idea how uh, we could probably consume cloud events, maybe into jobs or something? Uh, would it be uh, so? Do we consume and then convert the cloud events into Jenkins metadata, which can then be used to trigger jobs, probably like uh, trigger something uh, like a generic webhook trigger? Or something like that. Yeah, I'm wondering. Um, I mean, this it's definitely something to like investigate. But I'm like initially, I'm kind of thinking: is would this be kind of just like a webhook handler that we can post cloud events to in a similar way to like the GitHub okay. webhook stuff? Okay, so initially, this is just okay. Um, There'd be some level of authentication, I'm assuming, on that, like HMAC token or something. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Some something along those lines. Um, that might be a a good first pass. And there are plugins out there already that do something very similar. So. So there's a generic webhook trigger plugin, uh, which uh, so Mark had. Uh, suggested to look at this one. I still have to look at it. So he suggested that uh, maybe this could be a good place to start to understand like how the consuming uh, of cloud events would work in Jenkins. So we could probably look at that. Uh, I'll add that as an action item for next week. And that plugin is called, uh, what is the name of that plugin, Jibba? Yeah, uh, Generic Webhook Trigger. Okay. 
So And uh, next one, next one we have. Okay, so next one we have first prototype to understand how cloud events work. So this uh, this prototype, I feel that would be part of the uh, bootstrap. Uh, so this bootstrap would uh, basically. Yeah, this bootstrap, as I said, would basically contain like a minimal like cloud events SDB reader and handler, uh, like handler, uh, which which would just like be based on the uh, HTTP cloud events HTTP basic module, uh, which we can just create so that the so that would be like a good place for uh, the for the uh, student to start. Uh, and I I had a question about this actually. So uh, cloud events, uh, it, instead of it being a build step, would it just be a global plugin configuration? Like uh, what in the global plugin configuration, it would be like uh, the admin should be able to uh, enable like certain cloud events for the Jenkins. So he would go global. Plugin configuration. He would go into cloud events uh, configuration, and under that, he would just uh, mark. You know, okay, I need to see jobs in the cloud events. I need to see uh, job steps also, maybe like how they are being executed. If they fail or something like. And then there is projects. Maybe I need to see what projects are being created. So probably like uh, this. Like why I thought about this was. Uh, we could make build steps as well, but I don't. But I think uh, global plugin configuration would make more sense, and it would be uh, quite uh, should be easier for the user to have like a, you know like just have like proper configuration for the Jenkins itself for the cloud plugin. Let's say GitHub. Is it GitHub build strategies or something like that plugin? Or GitHub check strategy or something like that that sends <laughs> um, it sends GitHub sort of checks on every build stage that happens. And I'm wondering whether there'd be some useful code inside there um, to listen to for if that's just like you install the plugin and every build that happens automatically gets that. Mm. So that might be. Um, something similar to listen for. It creates a check for every stage that happens in a pipeline, basically. Okay, that's the consumer aspect of it. You're yeah. talking about. Okay. 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 Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I was actually talking about the producer aspect of it. So to produce like the plugins, like so produce the uh, events. So uh, Probably having a global plugin configuration would make sense. That is what I was saying. So that makes sense, right? For the production. I think so. Yeah. Um. Okay. And the uh, and in uh, so that is producing and in consuming. Uh, you're uh, you're saying that we should have uh, we should look at the that plugin you're talking about uh, this this plugin can, can you can you remind me what it's called I'll just uh, note that down. Give me a few minutes. I've got it here. I've got it locally. I just need to. I can't remember the exact name. Um, Thank you. 
Is it just the GitHub checks one? Or oh, is it GitHub checks? Yeah, there's a GitHub checks plugin. Ah, it's the GitHub auto status plugin. Okay. Uh, GitHub. Okay. So that's, that can be used with a few different things, actually. GitHub auto status. Can you put it in a link in the chat? Can. Yep, certainly. To Far too many windows open. I know. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, okay. So this one, this one would be for produ uh, consuming. Okay. But uh, what is this? okay, okay. Uh, I'll actually have to look into this and figure out how to. What does it mean by auto? Uh, Jenkins plugin to provide automatic status for multi-branch jobs. What? So I think it kind of it kind of sends events to something um, based on whenever you whenever a build or pipeline hits a or runs a stage. So I think it's used for like reporting mm -hmm. into things like yeah, InfluxDB and Grafana or something like that, but when I think it's installed with the checks plugin, it sends that to GitHub so that if you've got a pipeline with 10 stages, it will appear as 10 different checks. So you can kind of like follow the status of your pipeline through. We could actually follow the model for this plugin to understand how consuming would work. Yeah, that, that, that makes, that's good. Okay. It's, it, it's, yeah, it was, it was the, how, it, how it's obviously listening to the Jenkins internals to trigger. Is, I think would be the interesting part. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Yeah. Uh, we will need some reading. Uh, but yeah, I think we will get to. So, so, okay. So the next one, um, let me see. Yeah. So next one is figure out extent to which bootstrap for the GSOC students to there. Yeah, so the uh, the bootstrap would be basically just uh, implementing the uh, cloud events HTTP basic uh, module uh, to like a very simple level and in the plugin and uh, like implementing that in the uh, global plugin configuration. Uh, that that would be it and. Actually, this is this is actually related to uh, your last question, Kara. Like, how do you see the transformation from the statistics gatherer plugin to uh, cloud events plugin? So, probably would need a little bit more homework on this part uh, because that would tell us like uh, what the bootstrap would look like. Uh, because I think we'll have to bootstrap the global plugin configuration. 
and after we are done with that later on we have to guide them with how the transformation would look like so we have to get a better idea about that so yeah so that that's that and then yeah so next one is create a draft on tecton plant plugin and okay i haven't shared it but i have a draft here would you like to share? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll just share it. Thank you. Share it to you. Yeah. I'll just share it, uh, share it in the doc itself. Okay, so uh, there are so there is quick start. I still have to write the implementation examples and probably add a few more links. So, uh, Vibhav, I've had to request access. Maybe, maybe that needs to be shifted. Do you oh, want yeah, to yeah, yeah, no. make him look at it? Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll just add a question. Okay. Um, Can you can you see it now? Yes, all good. Okay, awesome. Yes. Okay, so what's next? Mm -hmm. Should we should we take a look at this? I'll share if you like. Oh yeah. Have you, um, you've had a look at the metadata that say Tecton is producing? Because I think for the cloud events work, you had said that was initial mm -hmm. first step. And I think you've, you've probably already done that, but that might be initial first step to outline for students or to have them do for GSOC. Oh yeah, that would be, that would be part of cloud events. Yeah. So yeah, I did that and uh, the metadata, so I so I have written down the metadata. It's in it's in uh, text over here. I didn't put anything on Google Doc like these two. Uh, so it's basically would be like uh, io dot jenkins dot event dot project dot uh, uh, created, and that would be succeeded, and all that would be failed. So so it would be something like that. So I still have to write the table itself. So that would be the action item which would be moving. So I couldn't complete that action item properly. I kind of got an idea of what it would look like, but uh, I still have to write the metadata table down. So I'll do that. Uh, I'll I'll do that and post it in the meeting. Should I upload? Should what I'll actually do is I'll create a doc in which. Uh, I'll just note down everything that is required for the Cloud Events plugin, the extent of the bootstrap and everything. I'll yeah. just uh, make like good notes about it mm -hmm. instead of uh, having it in text. So like actual text. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll put down, I'll put that down as an action item. That would be great. That would be really, really helpful. Um, I think for students and for all of us, you know, staying on the same page.
for the Taxon client plugin proposal, um, Gareth had mentioned a potential integration between Tectonus code and the Tecton client plugin. I, I haven't had a chance to look into it. Um, Gareth, do you want to speak more to that or above? I mean, yeah, I, I, I was wondering whether, I suppose we could use that idea of the, the .tecton folder um, and apply mm -hmm. those type of changes. Um, I did speak to the guys on the Jenkins X project about how they're manipulating and modifying it um, within Lighthouse, which was very similar sort of idea, actually. Um, so I think that kind of thing could work quite nicely. Um, I think there would be, need to be some processing of resources, but it's fairly minimal. Um, in this case of yeah, kicking off the pipeline run with the correct variable set and things like that, but it should be. Is that what you mean by might... processing of resources? Yeah, so they have a they have a um a, a dot lighthouse folder which contains uh the tasks and the runs and yeah, it's just a, a list of YAML files to be applied. But some of them I think they're kind of like load they're not just applied, loaded, manipulated slightly and then applied. Um, and it's what at what level does that has to ha have to happen? Um, and that's listening look, from looking at, yeah, so yes, yeah, so, also so the, the Tectonus code, or tech, yeah, Tectonus code project seem to you had to create a, a pipeline YAML and then a tasks YAML, you know, a certain file names you needed to create, but but generally the approach is very, very similar of how it's doing it here. Okay, awesome. And Vibhav, just so I know and everyone else, so you know, um, Lighthouse is functionally similar to to Prow. Is that a fair enough way to say it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's more of a um, yeah Tecton native version of Prow. Really, mm -hmm. it, it supports Tecton as a more of a first class citizen. Nice. Um. So how so how do you see the integration uh, going about? Like. Uh, like, do you have some technical idea like what that would look like? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, I, I suppose it would need, I mean, it would need to handle whatever the incoming events are to trigger the job. And then it's going to need to clone the repository, presumably on mm -hmm on the master or on the controller and then load any if, if that tecton folder or the dot tecton folder exists um load any resources from there process them and then apply them into the cluster um, and there'll be some configuration like what namespace and things like that do you want tecton builds to run in because um, you may want to separate them have them run in a separate namespace from where certainly from where Jenkins is running mm -hmm. uh, or where is Tecton itself installed. Um, I mean, I, I suppose you could see longer term that people may want to actually invoke Tecton jobs in a different, in different clusters. Um, but certainly not for a initial Okay. Um, I'm I'm still I'm still thinking what uh, for me like thinking in Java is like a little tougher than thinking in Golang. I'm just thinking what that would work like. Um, probably probably could you uh, uh, could we have an action item in which. Uh, like we understand technically, like how that would uh, work. Uh, yeah, that's good. Because uh, in my in my head, when I think Tecton plant plugin, I I just see the UI, and uh, okay. so I'm I'm just having like a hard time understanding like, and uh, when it comes to Tecton as a code, it it just uh, it it's they they seem like on like two different planets to me, you know. Like, 
because the client plugin basically uh, would, would create stuff uh, and probably allow to have DSL, which could be used in Jenkins file at some point in time. Uh, so, I don't know how that would work. So, when are you saying you want to integrate with Tekton as a code through the client plugin? No, probably not. So probably not integrate. So that the from so from my understanding, the Tekton as code piece is is a POC at the moment. It's like a um, mm -hmm. someone's pushed it up as a proposal. As like we could do something along those lines, and I think that approach. I think that approach would work really well. So um, I don't think integrating. I don't think you know directly integrating with what the work that has been done for the Tectonics code, but I think doing something very similar, something along those lines. So yeah, having a .tecton folder and being able to, I suppose, test for the existence of that, if it's there, then apply those resources. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have a POC of that working um, from a Jenkins pipeline, but the problem is it, it spins up an extra agent to be able to do the applying of things. And that's one of the things I was trying to avoid because it's an agent, it's a JVM, it's another pod to do the applying of stuff. And then the monitoring of that job is difficult. Um, Can I ask a more basic question? What would be the end game for that? Like, what would be the user benefit? So, the, of using Tekton in general with Jenkins, or of of doing this combination, like what? Um. So, what, one of the things that um, so t one of the things Tekton supports really well is um, the Tekton catalogs and the sort of reusable tasks. Um, and they've got this templating stuff now that's quite nice. So you can pull in existing tasks from other Git repos and have them versioned and synchronize them. And I think you do it the same with pipelines as well. It's almost like a, you know, a slightly, it's a different implement. It's more of a cloud native implementation of pipeline libraries. Yeah. Um, so that's the Tekton, the Tekton client plugin helps in that space. Yeah. So the Tectonus code, what? So Tectonus, Tectonus code is a proposal to kind of, yeah, it's it's the kind of inception problem you have with with any of these things, right? It's a way does it live? How does it, how does it kick itself off? Um, so that's like just, that's a proposal of how they would, how they could extend the Tecton project to do that. Um, and it's actually what Lighthouse did it's very, very, very similar to what Lighthouse have done to be able to create the pipelines in the first place. Um, so the proposal, I suppose, was to extend the the current Tekton client plugin to do that. Okay. Okay. Or something okay. similar to that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's more clear for me. <laughs> Um, probably, uh, probably need more uh, ideas of this, but I'm still a bit uh, confused. Uh, like, I, I, I still am like trying to piece the puzzle together, trying to understand how that, that will work. But that, when you say that uh, you're trying to uh, extend the Tekton plan plugin to do something similar as uh, dot the, the Tekton code, it, yeah, that that does make a lot of sense. But in this in this scenario, I don't see the dot tecton folder. Uh, what I see is uh, I see a DSL uh, in a Jenkins file, which uh, which is uh, which the user can use because of the tecton client plugin. I maybe the dot tecton folder can be a place where they can keep the resources. 
for the uh, Jenkins file to consume. Um, but this this is this is close to it as I can see it. Not I am not sure how the dot. I I probably need to read more about it. Uh, see how Lighthouse works. Yeah. Yeah. So should should we should we add an action item for this so to understand these uh, one one or the other better? Like how this would work out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'll let you. I'll let you. Um, okay. Probably this would be more of a team action item to yeah. understand how this would go. And we have the link. I actually want to uh, see if there's already an example of one of the code running somewhere. Which more send one of these, but I don't know where it is. And I will um, mm -hmm. ping the Jameses and see if they want to discuss the, the Tecton client plugin and the Tecton as code because that might, they might be a good resource. Also, Andrew Bear might as well since he's worked on Lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, that would, be, that would be good actually to get a bit of Lighthouse. How does Lighthouse exactly work? Uh, do you have, do you have any idea, Gareth? Uh, like I I don't have like a perfect idea of how Tecton as a code works as well. And you were saying that Lighthouse works based on the same principles. So yeah, so Lighthouse um, it was originally written as a kind of replacement of Pro for Prowl, um, where it takes in your GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever. Um, webhook that converts it into a like an internal representation really it has a series of plugins that can be run against that data um, and then originally it used a Jenkins X YAML which was like a, Jenkins X's own almost like DSL for describing mm -hmm. pipelines that it then converted into a Tecton job um, but what they found is that they spent so much time essentially like version chasing um, or trying to keep up with the Tecton syntax because um, it's evolving and it's, you know, they had to build that into the Jenkins X syntax and it, it, very, it was very time consuming. So it was felt that it was, it was better to use Tecton directly. So what they have is a dot lighthouse folder where mm -hmm. you put your tasks and pipelines and things. And when a job needs to be triggered, it loads the Tecton resources from there. And there's a slight bit of manipulation, but then applies them uh, in the cluster. 
do we use customize by any chance with that? That they take those tech torn tasks and probably they use a kind of patches those tasks or some something like that. I mean, I don't think they use customize at that point. I, I think they have been using customize and kept and things in other uh, other parts of the um, product. Mm -hmm. But I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you, I think the light task was designed to kind of be a bit agnostic to all of those things. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll probably also, yeah, then definitely need to read more about it. It, it, was, it was originally kind of designed to be like a high availability web hook handler for GitHub so that when your cluster was updating mm -hmm. or if anything died, at least you would still record web hooks or capture them and store them. They're stored like internally and they can be processed. That, that was the idea. Um, and then it would sort of eventually catch up. Okay. Um. So, okay. So should we move on to the next one? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, so the last one is, uh, would be great if James is for attending to discuss Tecton plan plugin and Tecton support. Uh, that would be great indeed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will take them too. And, and also, Andrew, if you could uh, speak on Lighthouse, I will ask him as well. So I put an action item for myself to do that. Oh, okay. And hopefully oh, yeah. we'll get them in. I know they've been really busy with um, the general, well, the alpha, of Jenkins X3, but hopefully we'll get them to come in. Maybe we can. Yeah, I, I hope they come as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Could any other questions or, or action items, anything else to bring up? Mm, Sagar, do you have any? No, okay. Sagar, did you have any questions? Um. Um, no, um, because um, I don't know, have even currently even much idea. I'm just trying to figure out. Um, I just want to work, explore cloud events. So, um, yeah, later on maybe, but not currently. Okay, nice. And do you have do you have a good sense of like first steps for for exploring cloud events, and how you would move in that direction? Um. Um. Currently, what I have a plan is um, exploring Kubernetes and then um, reading about cloud events by own because um, I mean, um, but if you can suggest me some steps, that would be also great. Mm -hmm. I I think um, exploring Kubernetes is, is a very good first step um and then you can look at some of the resources we put in the doc i don't know if you above you would like to add anything to that yeah uh so into that talk uh, actually uh, so if you want to get started with cloud events uh, that doesn't actually require kubernetes knowledge you could actually just uh, play around with the cloud events sdk and see just go through the example see what it looks like just play around i would give like a really good idea of how to get started with cloud events. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to see the Tecton plan plugin, then you can, then you would need Kubernetes uh, and Tecton and uh, like a little bit of that knowledge. That would be nice uh, if, if you would want to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I will um, explore the cloud events and then get, when I have some idea what it is actually doing, then I will maybe later on then I have further thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. So those were going over all our action items from, from last week. We have many more for, for next week, but it's good. I feel like we're making good progress in understanding the problem space. So that's excellent. Um, anything else? Last minute. Additions, questions, anything? 
All right, good, good meeting. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you um, for working on these projects. It's really interesting. And see you next week. See you guys. I'm gonna go run on the beach. See you. Bye. Bye.